Hello, my name is Shara Savage, a program consultant in the Office of Assessment and Accountability, or OAA. Today, we will be covering the Administration Code Regulation Training. The training has been broken down into four sections. The introduction, preparation, administration, and completion of the state assessments. If you are providing accommodations, you will also need to review the inclusions of special populations training. This training must be completed prior to administering any state required assessment, which include K prep, access for ELs, ACT, and others. During this section, we will cover the introduction of the administration code. This includes training protocols, test security, rationale, test preparation or test prep, the inclusions of special populations and the alternate assessment. The support materials you received include administration code for Kentucky's educational assessment program and this PowerPoint. Please note the page number at the top of the slides throughout the presentation is where the information can be found in the regulation. What is the rationale behind the administration code? Professional ethics, educational defensibility, and student ownership are the standards used in determining appropriate practices. Any test preparation Practice must be done in a manner that will impact student instruction and benefit student learning. Action taken by anyone involved with the test administration shall be done to benefit students overall learning and not to solely gain a testing advantage. The assessments are designed for students to demonstrate their understanding. Appropriate assistance, inappropriate assistance can lead to invalid and unreliable test results impacting parents, students, schools, and communities. Now, let's take a look at test security. KDE employs various data forensic techniques as part of its test monitoring process. The purpose is to examine anom anomalies that could possibly indicate wrongdoing and to investigate as needed. In fact, the investigation could be used to exonerate individuals suspected or accused of wrongdoing. Some discovery of inappropriate practices can be cheat sheets, adults changing student answers, receiving help, or verbal cues from administrators. Each year, staff from the OAA visit schools during the testing window. The visits are announced to the District Assessment Coordinator, the DAC shortly before the staff arrives at the school building. Sites are chosen both purposeful and random selection. OAA staff will interview school and district staff, as well as request to see storage and testing areas. Certain documents are also collected at the time of the visit. Any situation that is found to violate the the administration code or the special inclusions of population regulation is reported as an allegation. Allegations are investigated by KDE staff. The investigations require documentation of the incident to be submitted and can include additional school visits and interviews with those involved, students and staff. Let's take a look at appropriate instruction and test simulation practices. Let's start with what are considered acceptable instructional practices. Concepts appropriate for, in, for curriculum instruction can be found in the Kentucky Academic Standards. Other regulation apply to curriculum instruction, reward funding, etc. When planning activities tied to assessment refer to the regulations. Reviews are a part of standard instruction. Continuing this type of instruction during the test window is expected and should be reflected in lesson plans. Reflections in the lesson plans will serve as evidence of inclusion in ongoing instruction should there be questions about the review's timing. Employment 
outside of the school day is a teacher's choice. Examples of outside employment may be individual student tutoring paid for by parents, ACT National Administration, Sullivan Learning Centers, etc. Please note, teachers and other staff shall not be required to conduct test preparation activities instead of regular classroom instruction and shall not be required to conduct test prep activities outside the normal workday. Please see page 13 of the Administration Code Regulation. Test simulation practices are allowed under certain circumstances. Activities related to test preparation should be planned to improve student learning, including analyzing student results, student feedback, and advanced instruction. Events for the sole purpose of raising test scores or practice with no feedback are not acceptable. Testing activities that provide feedback that can benefit students' overall learning are acceptable and encouraged. Students should be familiar with using test taking strategies for assessments such as those used in the classroom, direct formative assessments, etc., not just for the use on state required assessments. Test prep courses, whether developed by teachers or districts or commercially bought products, are acceptable as long as the results are to, used to identify students' strengths and weaknesses and to guide students' instruction. Beginning on page 16 of the regulation, it touches on inclusions of special populations regulation and the alternate assessment. If you are providing accommodations, you will also need to train on the inclusions of special populations training. Annual training of the inclusions of special populations regulation is required if you provide accommodations to students. Annual training is essential for staff to understand their role in providing accommodations and to meet regulatory requirements. Accommodations are intended to allow students with disabilities access to the curriculum and assessments at the same level as the general education students. The purpose of the accommodations is not to provide an advantage or to ensure proficient scores. The inclusions of special populations regulation is referenced in the administration code. A violation of this regulation constitutes a violation of the administration code. A violation of the administration code does not necessarily constitute a violation of the inclusions of special populations regulation. What is the alternative assessment program? The alternate assessment program is for students with the most severe cognitive disabilities. Only a student who meets the all of the eligibility requirements for the alternate assessment program may participate. Eligible students shall be identified through the Emissions and Release Committee process. Interventions related to the alternate assessment should not diminish student ownership, but rather aid in the students exhibiting his or her knowledge and skills. Accommodations must be on the student's IEP, 504, or PSP, and the students should be accustomed to their use. Altering student results for any reason is considered a violation. Neither students nor adults may continue working with the test materials after the alternate assessment test window deadline. Are there additional trainings required? Yes, there are additional trainings required for those administering the alternate assessments. The other trainings can be found on the KDE webpage. This is our first check for understanding. The quizzes encompasses the materials we just covered. I'll give you a couple minutes to read through the, these yes or no questions and then we'll discuss the answers. Is it acceptable to do scrimmages or test prep activities? Yes, it is acceptable if feedback is provided to enhance student learning. Scrimmages, content review, benchmark testing type of activities are acceptable if the results are used to guide further instruction and to identify and improve areas of student weakness. Is it acceptable to do a content review prior to testing? Yes, it is acceptable if it is part of an ongoing instructional practice. 
regular review of content as part of ongoing year-long instructional practice. Are site visits during testing only chosen randomly by OAA? No. OAA site visits are selected both randomly and purposely. At this time, my colleague Pam Powers will cover the preparation for state assessments. Thanks, Cher. I'm Pam Powers with the Office of Assessment and Accountability. This section looks at how we prepare for a state assessment. Preparing for the state assessment requires district and building assessment coordinators to work together to make certain that test security is maintained, required trainings have been conducted, the correct classroom materials are available, seating charts are started, and that student motivation and rewards do not conflict with testing or other school policies. District Assessment Coordinators, or DACs, and Building Assessment Coordinators, or BACs, are the authorities when dealing with state-required testing. The responsibility of managing test preparation a successful test administration and return shipping falls to the DACs and BACs. DACs or BACs shall schedule the test administration, arrange for adequate staff to administer the assessment, prepare accurate student testing rosters and seating charts, and ensure that all assessment materials are kept secure before, during, and after the testing sessions. Test security should be a top priority throughout the testing process, from the receipt of materials through test administration and the return of materials by all parties involved with creating or handling of the testing materials. Secure test materials will vary slightly by assessment, but let's look at our most prevalent test, KPREP to better understand what are secure test materials. For online testing, you will see test tickets and seal codes created from the PAN or PAN system for TestNav, which is used by students to test. Once these items are printed, you must keep them secure until they are distributed on the test day. After the test ticket and seal codes have been used, they will be returned to the back to be securely destroyed. If you are dealing with a paper pencil test or the accommodated test kits, you will have test booklets containing the test questions and answer documents to secure. In some cases, the test booklet and answer document are combined into one booklet. Think KPREP science. You'll notice that scratch paper is available to students in both the online and paper pencil testing formats. Scratch paper is considered a secure material since test questions or answers could be gleaned from these papers. The move to online testing has allowed schools to print the test ticket on a single page so that the student may use the rest of the page as scratch paper. This reduces the amount of paper which must be secured. Now that we have a better understanding of what secure materials could be, let's see what the regulation says. If you turn to page six in the Administration Code Regulation, you will find the test materials section, which is divided into the acceptable and not acceptable columns. As we go through this training, the regulation page numbers are displayed on the slide to help you quickly reference the area. What is an acceptable and expected practice? Test administrators need test administration manuals in advance of testing to read and prepare for test sessions. Following test manual directions and reading scripts aloud is vitally important for a successful standardized administration and to avoid committing an allegation. Scripts are updated yearly and are unique to each assessment. Reading all parts of the script helps ensure that the student's test results are valid and reliable. What are not acceptable practices? Anyone having test booklets prior to the test 
acting without authorization from the DAC or the BAC. Why wouldn't you want to have test booklets early? What would be the first thing that comes into your mind if you saw someone with a test booklet before testing? Would you think that they are looking at the test questions? Maybe that review session for students concentrated on the test questions, giving their students an advantage over my students. Hmm. Remember, students have the right to valid and reliable test results, which covering test questions in advance would negate. Do you think someone would file an allegation if they witnessed someone with the test booklets prior to testing? Yes, it has happened. To protect yourself, do not handle secure test materials unless asked by the DAC or the BAC to do so. Handling the materials during the test administration or during the check-in or check-out procedure is expected. Handling those same materials at other times should be by direct request from the DAC or the BAC. This brings us to the second entry. It is not acceptable to make test booklets available to test administrators before this first scheduled day of testing or not keeping them secure between test sessions. This was designed to protect teachers and test proctors or administrators from the perception of wrongdoing. Does your school allow you to store test materials in your classroom? If so, the test materials left in the classroom must be double locked, such as a lockable storage unit inside a locked room. A double lock is only required for secure materials being stored in classrooms. Access to these locks should, shall be limited to authorized personnel. Secure materials stored in other areas, such as vaults or a counselor's office, do not require a double lock. When not being used for a scheduled testing session, all assessment materials shall be stored in a secure location with access granted to authorized personnel only. In other words, please don't leave test materials outside of locked storage unattended. Let's continue with more confidential test content. For the CAPER of assessment, the Kentucky Academic Standards, or CAS, K-A-S, contain the minimum required standards that all Kentucky students should have the opportunity to learn before graduating. CAS helps ensure that all students throughout Kentucky are provided with common content and have the opportunities to learn at high levels. It is expected that teachers would know and teach concepts from those standards. Another acceptable practice is the visual scanning of student response books during or after a test session. The test administrator may look at the student's answer document to see if the responses are being recorded in the correct location, but should not be checking, grading, or scoring student responses or looking at test content for the purpose of learning or memorizing secure test items. It is not acceptable to discuss, take notes of, or score test items. Have you heard the term alert paper? It refers to the student writing or drawing about suicide, abuse, etc. to him or herself or others. If you see this during or after a test session, Remember, it's all right to visually scan student response booklets or computer screens when monitoring the session. What should you do? The preferred response to seeing an alert paper is to alert your BAC or DAC and allow that person to make any copies needed. Why can't the teacher or someone else make the alert paper copies? If you see someone standing at the copier with a test booklet, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Somebody's making a copy of the test. You immediately report that test allegation. When investigated, it was determined that no allegation had occurred. The teacher was making a copy of an alert paper. This incident has happened in the past, which is why it will be the DAC or the BAC making the copy instead of one of us. What happens after the copies are made? 
it is expected that anyone who needs to examine the alert paper, um, for example, a parent or child protective services, should do so at the school after signing a non-disclosure form. All copies of alert papers are considered secure test materials. Once the issue has been resolved, the, co the copy should be destroyed in a secure manner. Besides the alert paper exception, it is not acceptable to produce secure, reproduce secure test materials in whole or in part or paraphrasing in any way. Reproducing could include taking photos, making notes, copying, posting to social media, etc. Also not acceptable is showing test items to anyone not administering the test or revealing test items. This includes a verbal discussion. Allegation alert discussing test items in any manner which re reveals the content of the item is considered an allegation. For example, two teachers who are administering the K-PREP are in the faculty lounge. They start talking about an item on the reading test and reveal the passage and some of the questions being asked. Even though both have signed non-disclosure agreements and are administering the same assessment, discussion of test items, passages, etc. is not acceptable and is a violation of administration code. What should they have done? If you believe an item or passage is flawed or incorrect, contact your back. Give the back the content area, section, test item number, and what is wrong, such as no correct answer. Notice that we never reveal the test item content. Our last not acceptable practice is using the knowledge of test items to prepare students for the assessment. This ties back to not having the test booklets prior to the test administration and not taking notes when visually scanning the test booklets. Our final acceptable practice deals with scratch paper. On tests where students are allowed to use scratch paper, the scratch paper is considered a secure test material and should be collected and securely destroyed after testing. Blank or graph paper may be used for scratch paper. With the advent of online testing, some schools are choosing to use the test ticket printed full page for each student to use the scratch paper instead. What you choose to use as scratch paper is a local decision. Let's look further at the handling of secure test materials. There are times when test materials will leave the school for offsite testing. This may include computers, paper test booklets, audio CDs, etc., etc. For materials being transported and used for home or hospital administration or off-site administration, test security must be maintained. It is not acceptable to leave materials with students in a home or hospital setting. Trained staff are expected to be present when secure materials are. Students utilizing paper pencil testing may be using non-standard responses, which are maintained on a flash drive or CD until all testing is complete to ensure that responses are not lost prior to the return shipment of printed responses with secure test materials. After testing is complete and student responses have been prepared for return shipment, the electronic versions are to be deleted or destroyed. Electronic student responses are to be temporary and not kept for review past the current test window. As a best practice, one of our elementary teachers said, if it doesn't move, put your name on it. This applies to test books, answer documents, and scratch paper. Each year, at least one test proctor gives the wrong materials to a student or two or more or an entire classroom. This can occur with online testing as well if the student doesn't receive the correct test ticket to log into the session. Instructing students to put their names on scratch paper and retaining the paper until testing is complete are beneficial safety measure, measures just in case there's any need to reference it before materials are returned to the vendor. We've covered the acceptable practices. 
let's look at the not acceptable practices concerning secure test materials. It is not acceptable to take test materials out of the school or district building for any reason except for approved off-site testing. Bubbling demographics or modifying materials for the alternate assessment shall be completed on school property. Allegation tip. Anyone can report an allegation. If you are seen with a secure with secure materials outside of school or a district building, someone might assume that you have nefarious motives, such as changing student answers. This is the perception, just like the alert paper in the copier. In reality, you're leaving to do off-site testing. Please work with your back on how to protect secure materials when transporting for off-site or homebound testing. If a student is using accommodated testing, which produces electronic versions of test questions or answers. These materials must be destroyed following testing. Maintenance of these types of materials after the test window is an administration code violation. Lastly, a student shouldn't transport or move his or her own test materials from one location to another. For example, a student receiving extended time needs to move to another room to complete the assessment. An adult who has received administration code training should transport and escort the student to the secondary location to finish. It's time for our next check for understanding. I'll give you a couple of minutes to read through these yes or no questions, then we'll discuss the answers. Is it acceptable to take photos of test items for use next year so that you know you are teaching the correct item? No, it is not acceptable to take pictures of test items for use next year so that you know you are teaching the correct content. Concepts appropriate for curriculum instruction can be found in Kentucky's content standards. Test administrators may use release test items and support materials posted on the KDE website to help prepare their students for the assessment. Question two, is it acceptable for testing staff to receive or access test administration manuals prior to the first day of testing? Yes, it is acceptable for teachers to receive paper or electronic test administration manuals prior to the first day of testing. And our third question, is it acceptable to read only the bold type instruction script in the TAMS and skip the test administrator director directions if you have been a test administrator in previous years? No, it is not acceptable to read only the bold type instruction script in the TAMS and skip the test administrator directions if you have been a test administrator in previous years. Remember, test manuals are updated yearly. At this time, my colleague Shara Savage will cover the appropriate assessment practices. Thank you, Pam. It's time to look at appropriate assessment practices, such as the required training and administering a state assessment. The administration code applies to all state required pieces of the, the accountability system using paper or pencil and computers or digital technology. Any person with the potential to be involved with any component of the state required testing must be trained on the administration code regulation prior to beginning the work. This could include, but not limited to, principals, off-grade teachers, substitutes, accommodation providers, librarians, etc. Any individual providing accommodations to special needs students must also receive training in the, the inclusions of the special population regulation. Volunteers who are involved in state testing, such as providing accommodations or helping with proctoring, must meet certain stipulations that also apply to school staff. No student may administer a student, a test, a state assessment. This includes peer tutors. All volunteers must have background and safety checks. 
receive confidential training, as well as the administration code and inclusions of special populations training and sign non-disclosure forms. The volunteers must be under strong oversight of a certified person who will be responsible for the test administration. If there should be a testing allegation involving a college student, the certified person in charge of the testing environment must be submitted on the allegation report. Schools and districts may use materials provided by the Kentucky Department of Education or those produced locally. Solely reading the regulation and signing the sign the signature page at the end of the document shall not be considered ad adequate training. Training shall include interaction regarding the content of the regulation with supporting examples and situations and the opportunity to ask questions and etc. The intent or the meaning of interaction is for the training to be more than simply being assigned to read and sign the document. The DAC back manual and TAMS are to be the guiding documents for the test administration procedures. Reading the TAMS is expected as part of the required training. Following the vendor's test administration manual is of the utmost importance. Districts are charged with maintaining records of individuals receiving the administration code training. The participants records may be maintained through collecting individual signature sheets found on the last page of the administration code regulation document or by retention of a group training attendance signature pages. Copies of the signature page or group training attendance sheet may be maintained in a hard copy or electronic format. Copy of the group signature sheet is available on the Kentucky Department of Education website. Training participants are held professionally accountable for, for their actions after signing either type of signature sheet. Notice that both sheets state, by signing, I acknowledge I having received a copy of the administration code for the Kentucky's Educational Assessment Program 703-KAR-5 080 and have participated in training for this regulation. I also agree to comply with the complete content of this regulation and understand that it that I will be held professionally accountable. Anyone assisting with state testing will sign a non-disclosure form. Assistance includes handling of state testing materials, escorting students, providing accommodations and more. Discussions or sharing test content details with others, even though they may have been trained and are participating in, in state administration, is not allowed. Disclosure forms can be found on the forms page in the Accountability and Assessment section of the KDE website. Resources and materials available to students during testing are dependent upon the assessment. Please check the test administrator manual for further guidance on what should be at the student's workstation during testing. During an assessment, test administrator shall not distribute, make available, or attach to student's workstation any information or materials that are not sent as part of the assessment materials or specified in the test administration manual or in a student's plan. Examples of not acceptable resources include copies of acronym sheets or sheets of paper containing a system for organizing answers, textbooks, computer tools, or other reference resources. A student's IEP, 504 plan, or PSP allows the student to have additional resources not to mention, not mentioned in this script. Please check with your back concerning accommodations. Blank paper or graph paper, clear or colored overlay sheets, and bookmarks free of content are allowed at the student's workstation, even though their use are not clearly stated in the test administration manual. Some schools use brightly colored, colored pieces of paper or a district or school supplied bookmark 
to meet to mark the where the testing will stop in the session. Whether or not a dictionary or thesaurus is allowed on a test will be covered in the Test Administration Manual, or TAN. Test administrators should refer to the listing of approved and unapproved materials in the TAM to determine when to provide a resource. On-demand writing is the only content area where a student is allowed to have a dictionary or a thesaurus. Online testing provides an electronic dictionary and thesaurus to each student. For paper pencil testing or as a backup for online testing, a classroom set of dictionaries or thesaurus should be available for students. Reading, mathematics, science, or social studies content area tests do not allow the use for a dictionary or a thesaurus unless clearly stated as an accommodation in a student plan. It is a local decision by schools or districts on whether to allow students access to non-content related materials such as books or puzzles after the student has turned in his or her testing materials to the test administrator. Please note that this is after the student has no testing material at the workstation. Unlike dictionaries or thesaurus, calculators may be used in more than one content area. Check the TAM to determine if the calculator is allowed or if this test section is a no calculator math test. Online testing will provide the student with the type of calculator needed for that test section. It is expected that the student will use the online calculator and not a handheld calculator unless student's accommodations plan specifies the use of a handheld calculator. Handheld calculators used for paper, pencil, or accommodated testing should adhere to the KDE calculator policy, which is available on the KDE website. Be familiar with the, re the requirements of each assessment that you administer. Some test vendors have their own calculator policy re requirements that may differ from KDE's policy. KDE recommends that schools provide calculators for each student that meets the current calculator acceptable use criteria. However, students can use their own approved calculator for paper pencil test. Test administrators are responsible for ensuring that the communication and internet capabilities are disabled during the testing session. This also includes turning off a computer algebraic system on a calculator. See the KDE calculator policy for details. It is not acceptable for students within the same testing session to share calculators, even if the test administrator clears the programs between the uses. There should be a one-to-one -one ratio of calculators to students during a test session. Allegation tip, plan ahead, plan ahead of time to have all the necessary related materials such as dictionaries, thesaurus, calculators, etc. needed for the testing both of the special needs and the general education students. Use the test administration manual to check which materials are allowed for a test session. Except in cases where allowed, such as testing online in a secure web browser, Students should not have access to electronic devices until all testing in the building is completed to ensure that the students are not communicating with other students in the testing session. Internet access may become necessary in the future for computer-based testing, but it will not be acceptable to use electronic devices or, or the internet to gain a testing advantage. Electronic devices are everywhere and they're getting smaller every day making our job of maintaining a fair and unbiased testing environment harder. Except in cases where allowed, such as the online testing in a secure web browser, students should not have access to electronic devices until all testing in the building is completed. To ensure that students are not communicating with others in testing sessions. In the case of the ACT testing, smartwatches or Fitbits are not allowed. 
since those devices can connect to the internet. A student may use an approved personal electronic device, such as a calculator, if the device meets the acceptable use criteria, which includes disabling the, the device communication and internet features. It is not acceptable to use electro electronic devices or the internet to gain a testing advantage. Online testing provides a secure br browser to prevent accessing other parts of the internet, therefore not allowing a student to gain an unfair advantage during testing. It is acceptable for test administrators to use electronic devices to contact school administrators regarding test sessions, such as problems with materials, student illness, administration questions. Teachers should be communicating with the building assessment coordinator or designee for assistance with, with a situation in the classroom and not with each other while testing is occurring. Backs or principals may routinely request that the teacher use their personal cell phone to notify the office of a need in a classroom, such as an ill student needing to be escorted from the room or the test administrator needing a restroom break. However, Neither students nor test administrators shall use electronic devices such as, but not limited to, cell phones, tablets, e-readers for personal reasons during test sessions except for the case of an emergency. We've looked at cell phones, electronic devices, etc. Now let's move on to the testing environment. A few years ago, when the regulation was updated, it was decided that the testing room surfaces should be free of content during operational and field testing. Yes, this means bulletin boards and walls and all surfaces. It is acceptable to place instructional material on bulletin boards, walls, etc. throughout the year, but when the room is used for testing, those same content materials must be removed or covered. Covered means with a covering that is not see-through or opaque. Some examples of materials are any content information or strategies for problem solving. These may be anywhere in the room, on the walls, ceilings, floors, windows, clothing. Yes, clothing. When the room wasn't required to be sanitized, there were some schools that were printing t-shirts with content on them for students. Sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? I can read your back, you can read mine, but what about the poor person in the front row? He does not have a shirt to read. He is now at a disadvantage. You could say the same thing about posters. If I was sitting next to a poster that just happened to answer one of my test questions, I had an advantage over the person across the room who was too far away to read the poster. The covering of the room and the content did get a bit extreme. To make certain that all students have the same resources and advantage, the posters, well, they had to go. Let's take a closer look at some of these materials. What can remain on the walls are motivational posters or materials without content and standard periodic tables. Periodic tables? Yes, periodic tables without additional content. If you do not understand how to read a periodic table, it does not give you an advantage. Materials that are appropriate for instruction and display may not be appropriate during testing sessions. Materials that contain content, problem solving strategies, processes, etc. are unacceptable for display or use during testing sessions. Even things painted on the wall, see the first equation that was painted on a classroom wall, or three dimensional sculptures or paintings used in a lesson must be covered. It is time for our third check for understanding. I'll give you a couple minutes to read through these yes or no questions, and then we'll discuss the answers.
Is it acceptable for a teacher to use his or her personal cell phone to communicate with another teacher about a testing situation in the classroom? No, it is not acceptable for a teacher to use his or her cell phone to communicate with another teacher about a testing situation in the classroom. Is it acceptable to allow general education students to use a handheld calculator instead of the online calculator? No, it is not acceptable to allow students to use handheld calculators instead of the online calculator unless the online calculator is not functioning or the student has a disability requiring a handheld calculator. Is it acceptable to leave content on the walls in the testing room when administering a field test? No, it is not acceptable to leave content visible during any state assessment, operational or a field test. Is it acceptable to allow students to read library or personal books as each student finishes and test materials are collected? Yes, it is acceptable to allow students to read library or personal books as each student finishes and the test materials are collected. This is a local decision to allow this practice or not. And at this time, Pam will be covering seating charts. Thanks, Shara. Now let's move on and look at seating charts. All state required tests must have a seating chart. Seating charts can be for group testing, like the layout of a classroom, or for individual testing, which we see most often for accommodated or makeup testing. The chart may be kept in either paper or electronic format and completed by the classroom teacher. A chart will be completed for each test session and kept on file. Sometimes the DAC or the BAC will supply the teacher or test proctor with a locally created seating chart template to use, especially if your room arrangement is significantly different. Example templates created by KDE are available on the KDE website under Assessment and Accountability, Assessment Support, and Forms. For those that want to create your own seating chart templates, certain information must be included. So what information should you include on a seating chart? You must have the test name, the district and school names, the test date, room number, content area being tested, all of the student names, names for all testing staff in the room, and the room layout. Student names should be placed on the appropriate places on the room layout. Some like to indicate where a student is absent from a seat on the chart. It is acceptable to use the same seating chart for more than one test session, especially if you are testing more than one section on the same day with the same students. If you have questions about a seating chart you or your school may have created, please check with your district assessment coordinator or DAC. Student motivation and rewards, including how to fund those efforts, can be confusing. This section will help remove some of that confusion. Good faith effort checklists may be used at any grade. The checklist expectation should be general in nature and not include any requirement that would take away student ownership. The checklist may include things such as comes prepared for testing with pencils and erasers or with a Chromebook, arrives on time, does not disturb others, uses time wisely, and focused on testing during, during the administration time. The checklist should not include any type of evaluation of student responses such as wrote at least three paragraphs or that test answers were correct or not. No evaluative feedback can be given to students until all testing is complete and materials are out of the hands of students and teachers. The district or school can decide how to share the results of the good faith effort checklist based on completed testing. 
Results may be shared for a grade level at a school when all testing is completed for that grade level. A school could decide to share the results of the checklist only after testing for the entire school is completed, or a district may give directions as to how results can be shared. With the move to online testing, some of the currently used good faith effort checklists may require updates. In a paper pencil test, it is easy to visually scan student responses following the test session to see if a student did a pre-write or completed all test questions. This may not be available for online testing. Once the test is submitted by the student, the test proctor cannot access the student's responses. Use of the checklist may require the teacher to mark the checklist as the students are testing. When using the good faith effort checklist, remember that this is the student's work, meaning we cannot require the student to use a particular organizer, strategy, or method to complete the test. If we choose to use the good faith effort checklist, how will we fund the rewards? Funding rewards for our good faith effort checklist may come from various sources. The best source may be donations from individuals, businesses, parents, or staff to fund the student incentives. There are other regulations besides the administration code regulation that apply to curriculum, instruction, reward funding, etc. When planning activities tied to assessment, refer to the appropriate regulations. Your district or school staff should be able to assist you with which regulations apply to your situation. One such regulation concerns the acceptance of donations and using school bank accounts. Follow the Red Book rules. It is not acceptable to use local school board funds or cash awards from school activity funds generated by students for student incentives or rewards to a attend school during the testing window, B, participate in assessment activities, or C, perform well on state required assessments. You will find this information on page 14 of the Administration Code Regulation. Also, extended school services or ESS funds cannot be used for test preparation. When it comes to funding, please check with your school or district financial staff especially if you are contemplating giving cash rewards. Your district may have policies in place for acceptable rewards. Having a student retake part of an assessment because of a disciplinary issue is rather straightforward in a paper pencil test, but not so easy for online testing. For online testing, the proctor will need to make note of the inappropriate content while monitoring, since they will not have access to the test responses once the student submits the answers. When a student's responses to test items are reviewed and found to contain inappropriate language or drawings, for example, obscenities, the student may be instructed to answer the questions again on a separate sheet of paper or sheets of paper for disciplinary purposes. The original responses shall be submitted for scoring to the testing contractor. The paper on which the retaken item is answered should be considered a secure material and treated as such. Follow the directions in the administration manuals for how to submit the retaken item to KDE. No changes may be made to the original response recorded in the student response booklet. It's time for our fourth check for understanding. I'll give you a couple of minutes to read through these yes or no questions, then we'll discuss the answers. Are seating charts required for makeup testing sessions? Yes. It is required to create seating charts for all test sessions, group or individual. Is it acceptable to announce on the intercom each day the results of the good faith effort checklist? No, it is not acceptable to announce on the intercom each day the results of the good faith effort checklist. 
Is it acceptable to let students know that they are doing a good job on test responses? No, it is not acceptable to let students know that they are doing a good job on test responses. Is it acceptable on a good faith effort checklist to require students to use a strategy they learned in class when answering test questions? No, it is not acceptable on a good faith effort checklist to require students to use a strategy they learned in class when answering test questions. Requiring a certain strategy interferes with student ownership. Now it's time to move on to the administration of the assessment with Shara. Thank you, Pam. During the administration of any state assessment, it is vital to think about test security, seating charts, administration practices, and test materials. What does test security monitoring look like? Test sessions shall be scheduled to prevent overcrowding in the testing location. Areas accommodating large numbers of students should have adequate staff to conduct active monitoring. Testing environments such as arena testing must be of adequate size and arrangement to allow for active monitoring. An adequate number of staff are required to ensure that monitoring, circulating, can be done in the room. Active monitoring at all times during a test administration is the test administrator's responsibility. Checking email, grading papers, etc. does not allow for active monitoring. It is the responsibility of principals and district assessment coordinators to ensure that proper monitoring occurs. What is the appropriate and active monitoring? Testing staff occasionally walking up and down the aisles of a classroom, staying visual at all times, and ensuring technology is not being used by the student. Other vital considerations are also essential to active monitoring, such as Test administrators must be careful not to influence or take ownership of a student's response in any manner. This may require suspending some actions that are routinely done during instruction. It is acceptable to advise all students before testing begins and at the five minute warning to do such things as double check their work, look for items that they may have forgotten to answer, and mark all all answers clearly by completely filling in the circle. Test administrators should make sure that the, at the beginning of each testing session that students are in the appropriate area of the test book and student response book. As part of monitoring, test administrators should make sure that students do not get off track in their work. It is not acceptable to encourage students to edit their responses by providing an evaluation of the student work through tone, gesture, or phrases such as, you can do better, or you can write more. Coaching, editing, pointing out errors, or missing answers in the student's work or any item of the test to improve student scores is not acceptable. No one at any time is to alter student answers. Doing so could lead to sanctions by the Educational Professional Standards Board. Altering student answers doesn't solely mean physically altering, but also means such thing as leading, coaching, or giving answers. Are breaks acceptable? Interval or restroom breaks are at the discretion at this, of the school or district and held between test sessions. Refreshment breaks are acceptable. However, it is crucial that materials are collected, secured away from the student, and students should be monitored at all times. For example, if students are taking a stretch break, the materials need to be collected and secured. 
If students are in a standing position, the view to all test materials are blocked, allowing for pictures to be made of the test materials. If schools or districts have approved interval or restroom breaks, the length of the time refreshment served and the monitoring of the students must not affect the integrity of the testing in any way. It is advised to schedule tests to avoid conflicts with lunch. However, if a lunch break is required during testing, lunch shall be brought to the students in the testing area. If there are too many students for this to be reasonably accomplished, test materials shall be secured and students shall be escorted to the lunchroom, told not to discuss the test, and sufficiently monitored to prevent discussion of the test item during the entire lunch period and then escorted back to the testing area. In the test preparation activities, we saw how to create the seating charts. Now that it's time to test, what do we do with the seating charts? It is time to update your seating charts. During the assessment, it is vital that the seating charts that you created during your preparation of the assessment be updated with the current testing information. The seating will need to be kept on file in case it is needed later if questions arise. During the administration of the state assessments, it is important to consider best practices on testing time, accommodations, testing order, testing materials, and student behavior. Let's take a closer look at what the regulation says about these best practices. Following testing time are essential for a reliable testing administration. Students who miss or leave a test session due to reasonable circumstances, such as illness, doctor's appointments, family emergency, may pick up with the next test item and use the remaining allotted time during a makeup session. Test administrators should note that the balance of time remaining for the students leaving during a testing session. The student cannot return to a previously answered item. Students who leave a test session for unwarranted circumstances, such as not returning after a restroom break, may not complete the test, be, the test part being administered at the time he or she left. Student absences must be excused for valid reasons, such as absences caused by student illness or injury or serious family or personal circumstances in order to participate in makeup testing. Principals should make the determination as to whether or not the absent is legitimate. KDE recommends that students test with their peers following an absence. Makeup testing should be done as soon as possible for those missed test parts. For legitimate absences, students are allowed to pick up with the first unanswered test and are to be allowed the balance of a allotted time to complete the test session. Students should not work on any items that were already completed prior to their absence. All testing sessions end at the end of the school day. When scheduling test sessions, make certain that the student has adequate time to finish the session or simply do not begin the next test session. Principals should work with BACs, Director of Special Education, teachers and accommodation providers to make sure everyone understands how to clearly provide accommodations. The routine delivery of instructional services is another way of saying what regularly happens in the classroom. For example, if a student has not used an audio CD throughout the school year, testing time should not be the first attempt in using them. Accommodations are to give students access, not an advantage. They are also should not give a, an advantage or disadvantage to a, another student. Scrubbing for a student would be an example of an accommodation that could interfere with the administration of the assessment to other students. 
In a scribing situation, a student will be giving his or her answers orally, and the other student could overhear. Students who receive extended time as part of the service plan are allowed to test with their peers who do not receive extended time during the regularly timed session. To use their extended time, those students must move to another location and begin the extended time portion of their test session immediately. The amount of extended time allowed should be in accordance with the IEP 504 plan or PSP. The Admissions and Release Committee determines if it is time, time and a half, or double time. Assistive technology, where appropriate, should be considered for use during instruction so that it, it may be available for the use during testing. The use of assistive technology lowers the number of humans needed to provide accommodations. However, if a shortage of personnel occurs, the test schedule can be altered to meet student needs. Changing the test schedule due to a shortage of personnel for providing accommodations does not mean changing the order of the test. All elementary schedules within the district can be different. For example, one fourth grade can have a totally different schedule from the fourth grade down the road. All fourth grades within the same school must have the same testing schedule. The testing window is the same for each grade level elementary, middle, and high within the district. The only situation where it's acceptable to change the order of the testing is when a student needs to make up a test session. If the schedule must be changed for the staffing reasons, the test sections must still be administered in the order in which they appear in, appear in the test booklet. Rulers may be kept after testing to use for future instruction. DACs and BACs should make sure that the test administrators distribute the rulers provided with the current testing materials and are not using materials from a previous year's administration. The rulers and reference sheets are yours to keep following testing. Please do not modify the rulers by trimming off the end so that the zero is now at the end of the ruler. Learning to read and use the ruler properly is part of the test. Alternate assessment manuals contain specific instructions for altering, modifying, and working with alternate materials. Test administrators do not have to wait for an incident to happen during testing to arrange for a student to test in a different location from his or her peers. This is considered a local arrangement. An IEP, 504 plan, or PSP is not required for this adjustment. It is essential to secure testing materials before, during, and after state assessments. What does the regulation say about reporting test material concerns? Errors or suspected errors in test materials should be reported to KDE. The errors may be noticed while monitoring, scanning for good faith effort, or reported by a student. It is acceptable for test administrators to read an item reported by a student in order to understand what should be communicated to KDE. At no time should secure information be communicated through unsecure means. Neither email nor texting is considered secure. If discussions pertaining to secure information is required, appropriate school or district staff are to be notified to arrange for a personal meeting. Only non-secure identifying information should be shared in writing to the appropriate school or district staff. The information can be shared with BACs first for them to forward to the DAC or the information can be sent directly to KDE. Any written information should only contain basic non-secure item identifying information. For example, K-PREP, Grade 7, Form 3, Math, 
Item 26 does not have a correct answer choice. Teachers should not discuss items with colleagues during or after the test session. Reported problems or concerns are to be relayed to the appropriate school or district staff. It is time for our fifth check for understanding. I'll give you a couple of minutes to read through these questions, then we will discuss the answers. Is it acceptable to indicate to a student the appropriate work area in a test booklet or student response booklet after a testing session has begun? Yes, it is acceptable to indicate to a student the appropriate work area in a test booklet or response booklet after a testing session has begun. Report the incident to the BAC who will then provide further details. Administering test sessions in the order in which they appear in the test booklet with the students of the same grade being simultaneously tested in the same content area and test session in a given school. Is it acceptable to point out to a student that he or she probably hasn't written enough for a constructive response? No. It is not acceptable to point out to a student that he or she probably hasn't written enough information for an extended response. It is not acceptable to encourage students to edit their responses by providing evaluation of student work. Is it acceptable to allow a student a few more minutes beyond the stop time to finish an exam if he or she has been working diligently? No. It is not acceptable to allow a student a few more minutes beyond the stop time to finish an exam if he or she has been working diligently. It is acceptable for test administrators observing any time limits and following the specific directions in the provided manuals. Which of the following are good active monitoring practices during a test session? Select all that applies. Two applies to this situation. Observing the room from the sides, walking up and, and walking up and down the aisles. Test administrators circling throughout the testing side during testing sessions. Principals and district administrators shall ensure that proper monitoring occurs. And at this time, Pam will cover the completion of state assessments section. Thanks, Shara. You're now in the home stretch. You've completed test preparation and finished testing. So what happens now? At this point in the process, you still have the secure test materials. If you are a BAC, you will be working out with your DAC or district assessment coordinator how to handle the return of materials to the vendor. For some tests, you may be packing and sending from the school. For others, you may be sending those materials back to the district to be returned to the vendor in one large shipment. After testing is complete, it is time to securely destroy the seal codes, test tickets, scratch paper, and any other materials outlined in the test administration manual that should not be returned to the vendor. Some districts have these items securely destroyed by the school. Others have everything brought to the DAC. This is a local policy decision. Test booklets, answer documents, these types of materials must be returned to the vendor. Follow the instructions from your DAC on the proper procedures to use. If you are responsible for packing these materials, please refer to the administration guide for guidance. Scratch paper has been accumulating all through our testing window and should be treated as secure materials. Some of our scratch paper could be test tickets that students use for scratch paper as well. As your materials ship back to the vendor, it is time to dis securely destroy all scratch paper according to your district policy. 
test tickets and answer documents should be treated as secure materials. Some of our test tickets could be in the scratch paper pile if students used it for scratch paper. As your materials ship back to the vendor, it is time to securely destroy all the test tickets according to your district policy. Completed answer documents will be returned to the vendor for scoring. Depending upon the assessment, you may or may not return blank answer documents. Please refer to the administration manual for guidance on how to handle blank answer documents. The review of secure assessment components has shifted from the district to the Kentucky Department of Education or KDE. Let's look at how those items may be reviewed. There may be times when persons outside of the education environment request to see secure materials. Schools and districts do not have to take on the responsibility of allowing access to those materials. This duty has moved to KDE. Oftentimes, the request may come in after secure, secure materials are no longer in the district. KDE keeps on file in paper format all state required assessments. For those willing to physically come to Frankfurt, KDE may make arrangements for specific concerns to be addressed with appropriate staff from the Office of Assessment and Accountability. Anyone reviewing a test item or items will be required to sign a legally binding non-disclosure form. As much as we try to have a perfect test administration, test irregularities can occur. Sometimes the irregularity will rise to an allegation. Determination if a test irregularity is an allegation should be made by the DAC and or the BAC. The definition of a test irregularity is an unplanned occurrences during a test administration that may be resolved at the district level or could result in additional investigations by the state. These investigations may lead to the reporting of an allegation. So what does a test irregularity look like? These are some examples of test irregularities. All of these are not allegations, but may need to be investigated to determine that status. All test irregularities should be documented and, and maintained in the district. Getting statements quickly from all parties involved will assist the DAC to know if an allegation should be filed. When you look at this list, which ones do you think rise to the level of an allegation? There are two, student leaving the room without authorization and the student not being provided his or her accommodations. Would all of the other examples automatically not be an allegation? No, each test irregularity would need to be investigated to determine if proper procedures were followed. If uncertain, talk with your DAC and BAC. We always get the question concerning materials in the classroom during an emergency. It is spring when we do our K prep testing, and this is usually a time of spring storms and tornadoes. If you can secure the materials during an emergency, please do so but the safety of your students takes precedence over the test materials. KDE will work with you if something happens to your test materials. In case you are wondering, we have had a tornado come through and take materials into another state. No students were harmed, which is what is important. These are the broad allegation categories or issue codes used for filing an allegation. Notice that the examples correspond to the information we have covered in the administration code training. Let's look more closely at each category. Inappropriate practice or improper assistance. This includes comments indicating evaluation of student work, any actions, comments, or feedback, be that physical, verbal, or written, that assist students in answering a question or completing the test answers. Use of specific test item knowledge to prepare students for the assessment. 
and allowing students to change or complete answers after the time limit. Our second category, monitoring issues or student inappropriate actions. Testing staff not actively circulating or not maintaining a conducive testing environment. A student worked ahead into other test parts or returned to previously administered test parts. Students sharing answers through any manner, including physical gestures, written or electronic means. Now, as we go through these, remember these are ex the examples we're giving you are just some of the things that this could be, but there could be others. On to the security of testing materials. Test materials left unattended or not securely stored. Unaccounted for test materials. Hmm. Allowing untrained individuals or those without DAC or BAC permission to access secure materials. Sharing in any manner knowledge of specific items. Allowing students to carry or have secure test materials without supervision. Then we have the materials, resources, and electronic devices category. Some examples would be staff providing materials that are not a part of the state required assessment, not providing resources as directed in testing manuals, displaying content information on surfaces in the testing environment, inappropriate use of electronic devices during testing sessions. Now we come to testing order and time. Staff not administering the test parts in the order they appear in the test booklets or not observing session time limits. We also have the special populations and accommodations category. And you'll find out more about that if you listen to the inclusion of special populations training. Some of those examples are staff fail to provide accommodations or provided inappropriate accommodations per the ISP, PSP, or 504 plan, staff not following appropriate administration guidelines for the alternate assessment test components, such as the transition attainment record or TAR, and the attainment task. And finally, we get to our other category. The other category is just what it says, it's other. So it can include such things as incidents or allegations that occurred, but are not limited to the following actions, such as test fraud, test theft, test prep, inappropriate reporting of student data and non-academic indicators, training issues, test security breach, et cetera, et cetera. So if it doesn't fall into one of the other categories, you would place it here in other if, when you go to file an allegation. Allegations are investigated by KDE staff. The investigations require documentation of the incident to be submitted and can include school visits and interviews with those involved. That would include students and staff. Allegations may be reported by anyone through notifying the school or district staff or directly to KDE. Allegations can be reported anonymously through phone calls or emails but the reported information must be sufficient enough to warrant an investigation. Reports that lack enough information are stalled and cannot be followed up on with an investigation. Allegations reported to BACS should be relayed to KDE through the District Assessment Coordinator. DACS, in turn, will submit the information online. Here's the process in a bit more detail. Investigation results go to a Board of Review, who sends their recommendations to the Commissioner of Education, who will make the final determination. The district will receive a letter from KDE stating the actions to be taken. There are a few more parts of the State Assessment and Accountability System the reporting of student data and non-academic indicators. 
Non-academic information submitted to KDE is expected to be as accurate as possible at the time of submission. However, there are opportunities to correct errors that are discovered, and that's during the data review process. Embargoes are placed around different types of data at multiple times throughout the year. The embargoes are in place to allow the review of data for accuracy before the data is released to the public. Releasing embargoed data can result in misinformation being shared and inaccurate data being used for decision making. KDE clearly communicates embargo time periods as well as when the data is available to the public. A violation of the embargo could result in not having early access to future pre-release data. Non-academic data, such as graduation codes, are entered into Infinite Campus, or IC, and retrieved from there for inclusion into public reporting for assessment and accountability. IC is considered the authoritative source for this type of data. It's time for our sixth and final check for understanding. I'll give you a couple of minutes to read through these yes or no questions, and then we'll look at the answers. Is scratch paper considered secure material? Yes, scratch paper is considered secure material. Are those who request to review secure test materials required to sign a non-disclosure form? Yes, a non-disclosure form is required for anyone reviewing secure test materials. And our final question, do all test irregularities result in an allegation? No, test irregularities do not always result in a testing allegation. This concludes the recorded administration code training. Shara and I would like to thank you for attending this training. If you have questions, please feel free to contact us at KDE DAC Information, DAC Info at education.ky.gov, or call us at 502 564 4394. Thank you for participating in this training with the Office of Assessment and Accountability.